get all of our objects of support so you can see how beautiful they are.
to hold them accountable for the ongoing assault against Ukraine and provide assistance to the Ukrainian people in the defense of their lives, their freedom, and their democracy. And whereas the people of Stratford proudly join in those, so many cities and towns near and far around the globe, including those in Moscow who risk imprisonment, retaliation, and death to protect against Putin's aggression and in support of the Ukrainian people. And whereas the people of Stratford collectively wish for a swift end to the senseless violence and needless, needless loss of life, and pray for the innocent men, women, and children of Ukraine who seek only to live their lives in peace, free of tyranny, and Vladimir Putin. And now therefore, be it resolved that I, the Honorable Laura or Hoynick Mayor Stratford, do proclaim solidarity with the people of Ukraine in their fight for freedom and commend them for their courage, their bravery, their strength, and their patriotism. I urge all citizens to express their support for those facing unjustified attack on democracy and freedom today and every day throughout this conflict. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as well as the citizens of this town of Stratford and the citizens of the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It shows that your hearts are with us today, with the Ukrainian people. When I was giving an, an interview, on the radio yesterday, the host asked me, so how did you come to be here in the United States? I said I came in 1994 to serve Ukrainians in the United States, Ukrainian Catholics in the United States, who had to flee Ukraine at the end of the World War II to Europe, and then free from Europe to various countries like United States, Canada, South America, Australia. Funny thing is uh, that we say that history repeats itself. Unfortunately, it does. I feel blessed for living here in the United States and serving our Ukrainian community and enjoying the life, food, and lifestyle and um, generosity of this land. This land of the United States of America is blessed because it has not not known the war on its soil for, what, 200 years? But on its soil, on its soil. Ukraine, Ukraine, in less than 100 years, less than 100 years, have lived through two major wars, and this is the third one. The first one was World War, World War, World War, World War I, and the second World War. If you look and Google it, you will find only that who were the major opposing sides in the World War I. It says with German, Germany, Austro-Hungarian Empire, Turkish on one side, an alliance of France, uh, 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 England, United States, and so on the other Russia on the other side. But you know that that war took place on the soil of Ukraine, most of the Ukraine, between 1914 and 1918. And my grand grandfather was involved, was fighting in that war. In World War II, there were two opposite sides. Once again, the Soviet Union and the fascist Germany, Hitler, Hitler's army. And once again, although all the European countries were involved in that um, war, that war happened on the territory of Ukraine again. 
so many countless lives that we have lost. In my family, I've lost two grandfathers, an uncle in World War II. So Ukraine has suffered much and shed blood. Why we are not in the Google, in the Google, in the Wikipedia um, listed when we talk about these major wars? Well, because at that time, the, during the uh, World War I, we were not defending. Eastern part of Ukraine was under Russian Empire, and the other side, Western Ukraine, was under Austro-Hungarian uh, Austro Empire. We didn't have independent country. During the war, before World War II, also, Ukraine was divided. The eastern part was under the uh, communist regime of Soviet Union, and the western part under Poland, which is now great supported, by the way, of Ukrainians. And we thank them for that, and bow their heads for before the, the, this nation. But once again, we are not listed as part of that war although we have lost many people. Now, in 1991, Ukraine regained its independence. And over 30 years, we have enjoyed it. We struggled, we have struggled economically, politically, but we withstood still and wanted to pursue the life in the European Union. But what happened that, once again, the former Soviet Empire, former Tsarist Russian Empire invaded Ukraine. And my dear, it's not a conflict. It's not a minor thing. It's a major war. Thousands have died, innocent people. We're not even counting soldiers yet. Many, over a million left Ukraine. It's a crisis. It's a war. If we do not, stop this war at this moment. If Russia does not stop fighting and withdraw its forces way back to where they belong in their own country, <coughs> this war is going to extend further on and bring more destruction and more life taken from people. We are not helpless. We have to know the truth, we have to speak the truth, and we have to stand by. And this is what I'm calling you upon to be aware of these things and speak the, the truth about this war. You also, your prayers are very important. And I as a priest call upon you to call for peace in Ukraine, for the end of this war. But I believe that Ukraine will withstand its, its evil force. I believe it will prevail because we pray for our, our soldiers. We're not gonna give up our freedom and our independence, which our ancestors for so many years have strived for. We've been always divided physically as a country, but in our hearts we were always united to have honor for our flag, for our hymn. We have a rich culture. Why should, why should we give up all this? We are not afraid. We are in pain. We are in sorrow for those who have died. But we keep our hands, heads up. And we stand with our Ukrainian president. We stand with his, with his government. We stand with the soldiers that fight for Ukraine. And we try to help those who are fleeing, suffering, and injured. I thank you for listening to me carefully. And I thank you for considering helping in various different ways those who, those people in Ukraine who are suffering. May God bless you all and protect us all and give the peace in Ukraine and throughout the entire world. God bless you.
Belarus, Ukraine. If you can, please stand. And we'll pray the prayer everyone knows, most of us know. Lord's Prayer, our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. He wants to say our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Bless us, O Lord. Bless the people of Ukraine. Protect them, strengthen them, and give peace to our country, homeland Ukraine, as well as to the citizens of the world. It was the first house, and I actually looked this up on Google, 
that it was the first house purchased, um, like it was built and then they were the first ones to purchase it um, on Sedgwick Avenue. And I gave a big story about um, both of them because they picked Stratford, they picked Connecticut, and it meant so much to me and all of my family still lives here. <laughs> and um, I wanted to know if Stratford was doing anything and knowing that they were not, um, the mayor and Karen, both thank you, um, wanted to work with me to organize this. And I cannot thank them enough because my entire family, <laughs> thank you, Stratford, um, did not have anything planned. And I am happy to represent <coughs> both of them and my entire family and my husband literally from Ukraine and actually even just was there in January. Um, she was over there for work. To have everyone here, it means from the absolute bottom of my heart. Thank you. So before we close, I wanted to read a letter written by Igor Isikorsky Jr. Um, and it's an open letter to the Russian community. Once again, Americans of Russian descent find themselves confronted by the actions of a reckless government purporting to act on behalf of the Russian people. Putin, by his cruel and clumsy actions, as well as by flexing nuclear threats, has resurrected the zombie Cold War, unified the West, and made Biden look like a strong leader. This call for Russians and this diaspora, as well as the motherland, to repudiate the actions of Vladimir Putin. While my father is known in America as the aviation pioneer and the father of the helicopter, he also is claimed by both Russia and Ukraine. He was born in Kyiv, where he built his first experimental helicopter, and also in Russia, where he pioneered in aviation. In fact, Sikorsky's deep roots in both nations are reflected by a museum in Russia dedicated to his name and the Kyiv Airport, which also bears the name Sikorsky. He was credited with the first core engine aircraft in the world for the use in World War I and supported the Russian Imperial forces. For decades in his adopted country, Igor Sikorsky Sr. sought to convince Americans not to judge the Russian people because of the harsh, totalitarian government. Igor all, always urged fellow Americans to distinguish between the actions of oppressive government and the inherent decency of the Russian people. He was motivated by a hatred of the communist regime, but had a deep spirituality-based love for the Russian people. Now Russians here and at home face the challenge to distinguish the Russian people from a cruel and vicious government. Now is that Russia must stand up clearly and unequivocally in opposition to Putin's deliberate war against the Ukrainian people. My mother was also an immigrant, born in Poltava, frequently said Kyiv was the mother of Russia. Now, more than ever, Russia is a cultural friend in America must stand firm in support of their cousins in the Ukraine, who must be seen as a dangerous and irresponsible tyrant. He does not speak for all Russian people. I repeat, my call to Russians here and to the motherland. Russia knew more than all the other nations, the horrors of war. I call upon you to repudiate Putin's war. Signed by Igor Isikorsky. And this was read at the Stratford Library this weekend, and one of the Stratford citizens recommended that um, I read this tonight because they thought that it would give some solace to people who are here and to unite us all again by doing the thing that is decent and just and honorable. So uh, in closing, I just want to thank you all for being here. Father Mazer, thank you so, so much for your kind words and your and you're providing history for us about what Ukraine and your people have gone through. You should all be very, very proud of yourself and standing in this solidarity. And thank you for coming to display what your nationality means, because it's very important for all of us not to forget. 
And then we, again, don't forget your cookie and your QR codes. And if you want to share it, you can share it on social media where you donate to the GoFundMe page. Again, um, we have an AmericanParish.org slash Stratford stands in Ukraine, a place to donate. And there are countless others that you can, you can just double check and make sure that they are reputable. But again, I thank you for coming tonight and thank you for showing being Stratford strong and solidarity with Ukraine.